How's it going, guys? It is Wednesday afternoon. About 45 degrees outside, and it's raining. Well, off and on. Got a project I'm going to work on today. I'm going to share that with you guys here. All right. I got some parts in. This is a 177-degree thermostat. It's made by CAT. Part number is 119-3075. 119-3075. Almost looks like a 6, but it is a 5. Got a gasket here. 4W0549. 4W0549. It's like a composite gasket. Um, got a couple things going on with Abel. Well, one main thing, but the reason I'm replacing the thermostat is because I don't even know if he has one. So it could be one of three things. Uh, the truck is behaving as it should normally, um, and that's just the way it, it reacts. Uh, the other thing could be there's no thermostat there at all, which is my guess. And the third thing could be that it's stuck open. Something is preventing it from closing. Uh, it takes quite a while for Abel to heat up while we're driving down the road. And that's important in the winter because we want to make sure that we have heat in the cab. And from other people on some of the message boards, I've heard it takes anywhere from 10 minutes to 15 minutes to reach normal operating temperature. And that's we're just not seeing that. It's taken anywhere from 30 minutes all the way up to an hour and a half. So something's not right, or maybe that's just luck of the draw and that's how my truck behaves but anyhow let's get started you guys probably know the routine by now but the first thing I got to do is jack this cab up so I can get to the motor Before we get too carried away, I figured I'd come out here and compare this gasket to the uh, water jacket size, and it looks like looks like it'll fit. Next thing I got to do is uh, drain coolant out so that we don't have a big frickin' mess of coolant everywhere. So I'm gonna dump out about three or four gallons. Now comes the fun part. Looks like they use black RTV on there, so this might take a while. Look at that. Absolutely nothing there. Nothing on either side. They didn't even use a gasket. Oh, man. This is the reason people shouldn't work on their own vehicles, I swear. Stuff like this drives me nuts. Alright, I gotta clean that up so I can actually use a gasket. And then, put the thermostat in there. Let's see if it fits should sit right on on that little lip right there huh imagine that it freaking fits oh, I can't stand it when people repair vehicles wrong it drives me nuts all right back to it
right, this elbow does have some, it has a gasket on it. It looks like they reused it. That's why they use RTV. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine this back flat with a um, orbital sander. Okay, guys, this is what I do. Now, this, this piece does not need to be perfect. Uh, it's not like a cylinder head or anything like that, so it doesn't need to be perfect. But I just need to get the gasket off there and get some shiny metal showing. So this is the method that I've used in the past on some Subaru repairs. And we're going to give it a shot on um, Caterpillar repairs, I guess you could say. Although that elbow is steel and the stuff that I normally work on is aluminum. But I'm sure it'll work just the same. So let's get started on that. Alright, that's going to do it. Um, you can see like a little groove pattern there. That is part of the natural casting, so I'm not going to go any further than that. Uh, I'm also going to take the um, sander out to the thermostat housing itself and hit that up. This one didn't require very much work at all. Um, and if you're going to do this, make sure you shove something down inside there so you don't just dump everything into the water pump. Uh, water pumps don't typically like it when you dump big chunks of stuff in there. They can deal with smaller stuff, but the big stuff is uh, no, no, no bueno. You could snap the shaft on it and ruin your truck. So now that I got that done, I'm going to deal with the gasket. See if I can find some new bolts instead of the ones that were there I'd like to replace those if I could and get this put back together get some coolant in it and then test it out all right I dug through the uh, good old Subaru parts bin and found some nice hardware with some lock washers and some standard washers on it we're gonna take this and the good old gasket put a thin layer of RTV on both sides of it and get that reassembled and move forward. Okay, got that done. Let's uh, get it refilled with coolant, start it up, and see how it works.
it's at the point where I need to start the truck up so the water pump can pump all the bubbles out of the system. So I'm going to lower the cab and we'll start the truck up and uh, top off the coolant. Abel's been idling for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. I just cranked it up to high. I'll come back to you guys when uh, temperature registers. We've never gotten it to register anything at idle, so I'm not sure. Well, we'll see. I'm not going to say that it won't work, but for darn sure, with no thermostat in there, it's most likely never going to get to correct operating temperature unless it's warm out and that's what we were experiencing okay just from idling uh, at normal speed for 10 minutes and high speed for about five minutes I'm already getting heat in the cab which is something we weren't able to do before so I burped the system for the most part uh, I'm gonna have to drive it around get the rest of the uh, air pockets out of it I'll just keep an eye on the uh, expansion tank back there but other than that um, this is great uh, I fixed that problem should have nice warm heat in the cab and I don't have to screw around with the controls while I'm driving all the time to regulate the uh, temperature of the cab so pretty excited about that if you like this video give me a thumbs up subscribe I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos on my channel, and I'll catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.